Let's learn some advanced C1 phrases to help you build your vocabulary. And all things considered, this lesson is going to be helpful and useful. And all things considered is the first phrase that I would like to teach you. So you would use this phrase when you're trying to say that something is true or good in general when you consider all of its aspects. And it, it, like you're saying that a situation is not perfect, but in general, it's pretty good. And often, I think you may use this phrase when you're referring to an event, like the success of an event. So if we're talking about a wedding, I could say the wedding was a great success, all things considered. There's a lot of planning that goes into a wedding. Some things may go wrong, but you could say all things considered, it was a great success. I also wanna teach you the pronunciation of these phrases so that you can say them accurately and clearly. And with this phrase, the only thing that I'd like to point out is that there's a bit of co-articulation going on with that final dark L and all, and then you move right into that voiceless TH in things because the tip of your tongue is going to be behind your top front teeth. And it's like we can just connect those two words, all things, all things considered. I guess all things considered, I was lucky Dwight was there. Now, I am not the perfect teacher, no teacher is perfect, but all things considered, this is the best place for you to practice and improve your English skills. And if that's what you'd like to do, please subscribe, turn on notifications, so that I can become your teacher. My name is Wes, the channel is Interactive English. It's all about helping you reach your fluency goals. That's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it bit by bit. And bit by bit is the next phrase that I'd like to teach you. So this is a binomial pair, which is talking about an expression that has two words joined by a conjunction. And that conjunction, it's often and or or. But in this case, it's not. We're talking about by bit by bit. And what this means is gradually. You're going to do something gradually. Often I think that you would use this when talking about something you're going to grow or develop, or even just the opposite, something that you're going to destroy or take apart. So I could say that I am trying to grow this channel bit by bit. I'm doing it gradually and hopefully it'll get bigger and bigger. You may be thinking, is there really any difference between bit by bit and little by little, which is also another binomial pair. And they really have a similar meaning. Uh, I would say that little by little is more commonly used. It's actually a B2 phrase. But if you know that binomial pair, then you should have no trouble using bit by bit. And for pronunciation, th there's not really anything too difficult going on here. There's a little bit of alliteration when you have the same sound said again and again, bit by bit, you hear that b sound. So in that case, it's pretty fun to just say bit by bit, bit by bit. Then I sat back and watched Moriarty destroy my reputation bit by bit. Let's just stay with the b sound with our next phrase, which is before you know it. And this just means very soon. So when you use this phrase, you're emphasizing that something is going to happen quickly and suddenly. And before I give you some examples, I, I wanna talk about the pronunciation. And I really want you to pay attention to the linking that occurs at the end of this phrase. So you have that w consonant sound in no, it's going to get linked with the vowel sound in it, that beginning vowel sound, no wit. And people will generally say this phrase together, they'll say it quickly, so linking will occur when you use this phrase, before you know it. First, she's texting at work, and then she's not doing her homework, and then she's hanging out with the bad kid, and before you know it, she's pregnant. To give you a few more examples, I could say, I know flying gives you some anxiety, but the plane will be on the ground before you know it. Or perhaps someone's pregnant and you say, congratulations, I bet the baby will be here before you know it. Or if you start using Elsa speak before you know it, your pronunciation will have improved dramatically. And I'd like to thank Elsa Speak for sponsoring today's lesson. So this is a great app that I actually learned about from many of you, but if you're not familiar with it, let me show you what it's all about. There are many different things that you can do to really help you fine tune your pronunciation. You can practice by skill, and there are a lot of them. You can also practice by topic, and there are many of those as well. 
And something else that's very cool about Elsa Speak is that you can practice the words and phrases that you want to learn. So we can even practice a phrase from this lesson. If I were just to type in before you know it, and then you can listen to it. Before you know it. And then practice. Before you know it. All right, excellent. And then let me show you what it would look like if a mistake is made. So instead of no, I'll say now. Before you know it. And as you can see, this instant feedback allows you to make adjustments and continue to improve. And right now, when you click on the link below and download the Elsa Speak app, you can get seven days of the pro membership for free. But you can also use my discount to get 85% off a lifetime membership or 40% off a one-year membership. So check out the links and discounts in the description if you would like to improve your pronunciation. And before you know it, you're gonna sound just like a native speaker. It's gonna happen one day out of the blue. And that is the next C1 phrase that I want to teach you, out of the blue. You can use this phrase to say that something happens that is completely unexpected. And often you, you would use this if you're telling a story and then you want to emphasize the thing that was unexpected. Last week, out of the blue, she said that we should move in together. and. I didn't know that our relationship was that serious. It just happened out of the blue. So I use this adverb phrase once at the beginning of the statement and then at the end. You can kind of move it around a little bit. And once again, this phrase has a similar meaning to another phrase, which is out of nowhere except out of nowhere is a B2 phrase. But when you're building your vocabulary, it's good to get a little variety when you're having a conversation, or in this case, when you're telling a story and you can use different phrases. For pronunciation, the one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that final T in out. I'm from the United States, so with the American accent, I'm gonna pronounce that T as a flap T. It's gonna sound like a soft D. And then I will link it with the vowel sound in of. It's gonna sound like out of, out of the blue. And because you're emphasizing something that happens, people will say this quickly and they will link those words together, out of the blue. Everything was going great until he suddenly reappeared out of the blue, but that dumb dumb ran his mouth. The next phrase is at a glance. This means to see something immediately or quickly. And people may use this phrase with the word quick and say at a quick glance. You're just adding a little emphasis to the speed. Or someone might say at first glance. That's another collocation with this phrase saying that you looked at something quickly, but then you had to look at it closer or maybe you looked at it again. To show you how it's used in context, uh, I could say I could tell at a glance that something was wrong. Everyone looked worried. Or, I recognized her at a glance. She was the woman from the party. And for pronunciation, once again, that T in at, I'm gonna pronounce it with a flap T, and then I will link it with the vowel sound in a, uh, that article, at a, at a glance, at a glance. We're gonna line the front seat and the back seat and the floorboards with quilts and blankets. The cop stops us and starts sticking his big snout in the car. The subterfuge won't last. But at a glance, the car will appear to be normal. Then there's the phrase to have something against someone. And this just means to dislike someone for a reason. And even though the meaning is pretty simple and straightforward, the usage of this phrase can be a bit challenging because the something is your reason. And let's say you don't like someone because uh, they stole something. I, I would not say I have stealing against him. That just sounds awkward. Instead, the reason, that something, it's often, well, it's not going to exist or it's going to be unknown. So let's talk about a reason that just doesn't exist. In this case, you're basically saying that you have no reason to dislike someone. And people may use this with the words nothing or anything. So I might say, I have nothing against him. We just don't have anything in common. So I don't have any reason to dislike him, <laughs> the reason it just doesn't exist, but maybe you don't have anything in common and therefore you're not friends. Or using anything, I don't have anything against her, we just don't get along. 
So once again, the reason why I dislike this person just doesn't exist, but maybe again with some people, you don't end up getting along and you're not friends. If we're talking about a reason that is unknown, well then people may ask a, a question and use this phrase like, why were you so mean? What do you have against her? So again, it's unknown the reason, so that's why I'm asking the question. What do you have against her? Or you could just use this in a statement if I'm asking you, like, well, look, I don't know what you have against me, but we really need to find a way to work together. So again, what you have against me is that noun clause, but I'm still talking about a reason that is uh, that is unknown. I don't know what you have against me, but I know that's that's just an example. You know, we're, we're friends, we get along, I think we work well together. But if we're talking about the pronunciation of this phrase, uh, I'd like to point out that elision may occur if the someone is him or her. And elision is when you remove uh, a certain sound or even syllable. So in this case, we're talking about that H in him or her. And if it gets removed, well then we can link that final T in against with the vowel sound. So it'll sound like against him or against her. What do you have against him? What do you have against her? And elision may occur when you're pronouncing this phrase. You don't care very much for our community, do you, Mr. Walsh? I have nothing against your community, Mr. Pruitt. The next C1 phrase that I have for you is to look on the bright side. And this just means to find good things in a bad situation and you would tell someone to look on the bright side. So think about it in the context of trying to cheer someone up and there's a bad situation and you tell them, look on the bright side, and then you would follow it with a reason and that's really important. So you're telling them to cheer up, try and stay positive, and then you gotta give them a reason why. If you just say, look on the bright side and don't say anything else, then it's gonna seem a little strange. So let's say you tear your new shirt and you're really upset about it and I'm trying to cheer you up. And I say, hey, look on the bright side. Now you get to go shopping for some new clothes and you get to find a new shirt and you can look on the bright side. When you're pronouncing this phrase, just keep in mind that once again, linking will occur. We can link that final k consonant sound in look with the vowel sound in on, look on. And remember the article the, we're gonna pronounce it with a schwa sound because it comes before that consonant b sound in bright. Look on the bright side, look on the bright side. This is a deal breaker. <laughs> look on the bright side. <laughs> What's the bright side? Only nine more months to Comic-Con. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> to take issue with. So this just means to strongly disagree with someone or something. And you could just use this instead of saying, I disagree. I take issue with that. And it just gives it a little bit of emphasis. I take issue with teachers who use corporal punishment. Or we took issue with the changes they made to the contract. Or you're not gonna hit the like button I take issue with that, okay? I just, I disagree with that. And of course, I'm just kidding. You, you can do whatever you want. But when you are pronouncing this phrase, keep in mind that we can link the final consonant sound in take with the beginning vowel sound in issue. Take issue. And you can start to see a theme here that linking commonly occurs in many of these phrases. That is, that we already are. Cool your tongue, Airman, because I intend to take issue with your performance. Then we have to keep a low profile, and this means to avoid attracting attention to yourself. And I think that we can all relate to this phrase. Right now, can you think of a time when you were trying to keep a low profile? Perhaps you go to uh, some social event, maybe a party, and you really don't feel like talking to many people, so you try to keep a low profile. Or, or perhaps at work, maybe you showed up late or you forgot to submit something. You don't want to attract attention to yourself, so you try to keep a low profile. And for pronunciation, yes, more linking. We can link that consonant sound in keep with that schwa sound in the article uh, keep, uh, keep a low profile. Advice for me on my new position? Keep a low profile. If I had a gold dragon, every time I heard that joke, I'd be richer than you are. 
Then we have the phrase in accordance with, and this means in a way that agrees with or follows. And, and typically you're talking about agreeing with or following a rule or a law. And because of the meaning that you're following a rule or a law, I think it's likely that you may hear this phrase being used in a more formal situation. So I could say the Justice Department acted in accordance with the new law. Or to be honest, I could get banned from YouTube if I am not in accordance with YouTube's terms of service. So in both of those examples, it's a, it's a little more formal because I'm talking about following a rule or a law. Now, when you pronounce this phrase, of course, we can link those first two words. We can link that consonant N and N with the vowel sound in accordance in accordance. And keep in mind that final syllable in accordance, even though it's spelled D-A-N-C-E, you're not going to say dance. It's going to have that schwa sound. It's going to sound like dunce in accordance with. In accordance with FAA rules, the first two people to the front will be upgraded to first class. <laughs> okay, you two. The next couple of phrases are more related to driving, and the first one is back road. So a back road refers to a small road that does not have a lot of traffic on it. So maybe you're just trying to avoid traffic or avoid those busy streets and you take some back roads. And one thing I want to point out is that I think you'll often use this with the plural roads because when you're driving if you're trying to avoid traffic you're probably not just going to stay on one road you may take several different ones and that's why people often talk about back roads i know some back roads that we can take in order to avoid rush hour traffic and the pronunciation of this phrase is pretty simple and straightforward you just say those two words as they are back roads i'm glad we took the back roads Highways are probably a mess right now. Then there's bear left or bear right. This means to change direction slightly so that you're going in a particular direction, in this case, left or right. And I think these phrases are very useful, especially if you're giving directions and you want to be specific because some roads, especially some of those back roads, uh, they, they may not always have a full left turn or right turn. And I would say, hey, up ahead, you're, you're going to want to bear left, and then after that, the road's going to intersect with another one, and when that happens, you should bear right. All right, I'm just trying to be a little more specific. And I also want you to keep in mind that the word bear, this is a homonym. Do not think about the animal. This is a verb to bear, and it means to change direction slightly. And again, we're just going to provide that extra bit of information to bear left or bear right. And for pronunciation, the only thing I want to say about, well, just one of the phrases, bear right, you have that overlapping R sound, that final R in bear and the beginning R in right, just allows you to move from one word right into the next, bear right. Or maybe we'll bear left. Fuzzy, yes. Uh, bear left. What? Bear left. Right frog. What? Never mind. That's cute. Uh. Now, I know some of these phrases may be challenging, but I, I want you to look on the bright side. As you continue to build your vocabulary bit by bit, well, then you will continue to develop your overall English fluency. You just need to keep reviewing these phrases from time to time, and before you know it, they'll become a part of your active memory and you'll be able to use them easily and naturally. And I hope you agree with me and you don't take issue with what I just said. I would love it if you write to me down in the comments, unless you're trying to keep a low profile. In that case, I, I understand. But if you learn something new, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. So long.